And now we move on to our final event. And that's, of course, our review of Halloween. The other Halloween. Because we just reviewed Halloween, so now we're going to review Halloween. In honor of Halloween. Right. So, okay, all annoying-ass puns uh, where we just keep saying Halloween. We're reviewing the original classic John Carpenter-directed 1978 Halloween. I was a huge fan of the slasher genre. I think this is needless to say that I obviously give this a perfect score, Mm -hmm. especially since this is a classic, like cream of the crop. And in many ways, this sort of... It wasn't the first slasher, what many people seemingly believe. It was not the first, but it was definitely the one that put put that subgenre on the map. It influenced and a decade. Basically. Because mm-hmm. 78, everything in the 80s that came after it was somehow influenced by this. Hell, or at e- least in the horror genre. Even beyond that with Scream. Yeah, definitely. So again, obvious perfect score. This to me is probably my second favorite horror movie ever. Damn. So, like, the Holy Trinity to me is, or at least my favorite three, personally, are Child's Play, This, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. So, of course, the slash subgenre got its first foray, or at least the first one that I can think of, and I'm sure you could argue the case for things like Psycho, which it's like, it's almost like not really because it's Hitchcock and he's like his own thing. Mm Mm-hmm. But Black Christmas, yeah, yeah. interestingly enough, also Halloween, or sorry, not Halloween, uh, a holiday-themed mm-hmm. slasher. Yes, it sure is. And I think that one of the big things I noticed off the bat is that just how many things in this you can find in movies that precede it. You know, like, yeah. oh, the baby, I mean, just babysitters, oh, the promiscuous, you know, people getting stabbed. You know, the, the drug people, the you know, people doing drugs and... Well, not. that, yeah, like, it's been, one, it's been parodied over and over again. Because oh, it's like, course. you know, in Scream. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, the scene where he's like, you can't have sex. And then everyone's like, boo, and they're throwing popcorn at him. Yeah. It's like, you can't, don't go anywhere alone, mm-hmm. you know? Right. This is one of those movies that really helped solidify those rules. Yes, and it, it really, it really, um, well, I mean, God... Could you imagine seeing this when it came out? In 78? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Imagine seeing Star Wars and then seeing this the next year. Well, Man. first of all, how awesome would that be? Secondly, just imagine. It's like, wow, I didn't know movies could get this dark. Right. And and I guess that must have been pretty freaky at the time. I think it's... I think we might have mentioned this in the other Halloween review, but... This movie, after watching it again, mm-hmm. as I revisit this every year, I mean, I remember it backwards and forwards, but I always pick up on new things. It's always fun to rewatch. Mm-hmm. And to me, what really stuck out was uh, what makes this scary is it's it's the what ifs. Mm-hmm. Well, what if there's this creepy ass guy in a mask just like standing everywhere stalking you? Yeah. Making you think you're crazy. And then especially... As we mentioned on the other Halloween review, uh, the theme of it happening on Halloween. What a what a what a you know what worse a night for that to happen on? Oh, it's just kids playing pranks. Right, right. You know, the I, other, love, I love when the the gravestones, <laughs> you know, uh, Judith Myers gravestones gone. Damn kids. Yeah. Geez. Why? I love it. Why do they do it? <laughs> also. Also, that scene well done in the Rob Zombie remake, Sid mm-hmm. Hey, Goddamn kids, don't think I got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing that's super scary about this is just the randomness of yeah. this movie. And it's it's like... Well, wh- depending on which Halloween canon, it's <sighs> not so random. And that's where... Well, that's honestly oh. where... And I haven't seen any of the other ones, but that's honestly where the franchise goes to shit. It's like, well, it's not random. Uh... You know, it's weird. I know a lot of people who are very purist about this being the end-all, be-all. Mm-hmm. Just like sequels be damned no matter what. I like 4 and 5 a lot. In fact, 4 is my second favorite. Are they as scary, though? No, definitely not. They're more standard. But- well, actually, 4 has a freaky element in mm-hmm. it. 
And I think when, well, it's funny you mentioned that they try to expand upon it in five. Yeah, yeah. And it's not as good. And that's kind of like how two expands upon one and also Mm. isn't good. Or rather, as good. Yeah. And then you know what? Fuck it. Three's good. It's Mm. just not really one of the series. Right. Well, that's, but I think that's what makes the purity of this and so, then, yeah. so like standalone is like, why did, well, why does Michael want go after Laurie Strode? Because it's like, he just fucking can. He's the first one. She's the first one he sees. Why well, Hanfield? Well, that's where he grew up. Yeah. And like, she walks up, she walks up to his house and, and he's that, there. Yeah. She drops the keys into the mailbox or whatever. Exactly. And as, as you know, uh, I'll, I'll put on my asshole beret film. So art. So I think Halloween is a time of tricks. And I think it is that Michael Myers enjoys good trickery. Yeah. <laughs> now, but like, I think that's part of it. He likes to fuck with people. No, I agree. And that's, that's and what, what's so what, scary about this. And again, it's the idea that it's Halloween. Mm-hmm. That That's the night to do it. So th- that really stuck with me as I, 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 I tried to, not like overanalyze, but like, I was just trying to think about the, like, why, why was this different than other movies that had come before it? Mm-hmm. Or why did this strike a chord? I think it was because there wasn't anything this... I would say probably the the most the thing closest to this that had come prior was probably Psycho. Or Black Christmas. Black Christmas, definitely. It, it It's still different, but it's, you know, it's a holiday-themed, it's right. a slasher. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it... Well, I don't know. I'm not sure why that one didn't didn't take off as much as Halloween did. I don't you know. know. It maybe probably didn't have the same marketing or anything. Yeah, that might be a, that might be actually because that came out seventy four. Seventy four. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that only made four million. That's pretty crazy. Against what budget? Six twenty thousand. Okay. Wait. So that cost twice as much as this? Allegedly, yeah. Wow. Damn. Well, there's something that's crazy. Is I just love that like Halloween is. This original one has so many great, fun, dumb little factoids. Mm-hmm. Like, they had three guys uh, play Michael Myers at a time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, I met one of them at a convention. What's really? his name? Nick Moran. Mm-hmm. Or, fuck it. Nick Castle? No, sorry. Not Nick Moran. Jesus Christ. It's uh, Tony Moran. Oh, okay. Or, hold on. Look that shit up. Make sure I'm right. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, I know Nick Castle's, he's the main one. Will Will Sandon and Tony Moran and Nick Castle. Yeah, one of them. I think he was like a producer. It was just for like one shot or something. Well, the one where he takes his his mask off, right? I think that was Tony Moran. Yeah. Anyway, it's just there's fun stuff like that. The mask itself. Mm-hmm. It's a William Shatner mask. They painted white. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's like how the hell would you have ever thought that that would work? Yeah. Well, I think it's because it's the fact that it's hidden throughout the film. Like you really only like two thirds of the way through. You even know he's wearing a mask because, like, I mean, every, you, no, every, you can kind of tell in some of those shots, like some of them, like, but you see him from like afar, like yeah, in his yeah. car, and you're like, what? Like that dude looks kind of weird, but then you're like, right. oh, he's like, why is that dude's skin so white? And you're like, oh shit, it's a mask, and he's he's it's just uh, it's even creepier, you know. All right, so let's pick up a full head of steam and go down the list. Yes, let's do it. Starting off, kills, body count, three. What do you got? We got three kills. Uh, technically, we have a lot of off-screen ones in this. That's true. That's what's weird is, well, and technically four if you count Judith Myers. That's true, yeah. We got... That's what's also so fucked up about this movie is, like, from the get-go, it's like, he did, he started this, the, mm-hmm. what he's doing when he was six. Yeah. You know? It sets the tone. It sets the tone right away. But yeah, we got Judith it's Myers. It's kind of like sending your fourth line out to start a hockey game and just starting a line brawl. God. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. You know, some sometimes you do that when you're the who was it, was it the Calgary Flames and the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, this yeah. was like a couple years ago. I just I love a good excuse to bring up line brawls. <laughs> so who else we got? Judith. We got okay. That so truck Judith, mechanic the, guy, mechanic guy, and then the Lori's doggy. Friends. Oh yeah, the doggy. doggy uh, Annie, mm-hmm. Linda, and Bob. I think his name is yeah, Bob. Yeah. So let, let's go through them, you mm-hmm. know. So well, the Judith Judith Myers one is probably the worst one. Well, it's also the POV. Yeah, just everything about that is just 
Wow, that must have been something to see on screen in theaters in 78. Mm-hmm. Actually, I take that back. Bob's might be the the, the worst slash best one because he yeah. pins him to the fucking wall. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like you get it. Well, but also it's like the lead up to each one is so good because who's the first friend? It's Annie gets it first, right? Yeah. And it takes so long because I like how that scene fucks with you. Mm-hmm. You're like, you, even, even though I've seen this movie a hundred times, I never remember the exact, uh, how do you put it, like choreography of how the scene plays out. Right, right. Like I always think, oh, this is where she gets. I'm like, oh, no, that's right. She gets caught in the window. Yep. And Michael is just like sitting there. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm planning on something. Mm-hmm. Then he gets her eventually. Gets her in the car. Yeah. He just like presses her face against the window and breaks her neck or whatever. Yeah. Well, no, then it slits her throat. And you oh. don't, you don't, or I think that's what it was. Yeah, I thought, I thought he just like choked her out. Whatever. It's like the kills are a lo- obviously like the main comparison is the kills are not super brutal in terms of like graphic looking. Yeah, they're not very elaborate, but they happen. But they happen, and it's also and the lead up is elaborate. See, that's what I think is the difference between this and the new one mm-hmm. is the the kills in this are obviously. It's more about the lead up than it is the kill itself. Yeah, and it's about like the situation characters are in when they're getting killed more than just like, you know, like you get killed like while you're starting your car. Like that's yeah. a super vulnerable time or like. Or while she's on the phone. Right, right. Or like while you're, you know, with your lover, you know, yeah. like in bed. Like that's fucked up. That's what I, I love how, for whatever reason, Michael decides to do the sheet thing. Yeah, that's creepy. What's What makes that so creepy is that, that you're like, with Bob's character, he's just kind of like a waste cased moron. Mm-hmm. Like you could see him doing that thinking he's funny. Right, right. And that's a, that's why that works so well. <laughs> It yeah. is it is a creepy sight. Yeah. Then PJ Souls, mm-hmm. first of all, uh, what the fuck is her name in the fucking... You ever seen that Ramones movie? No. Rock and Roll High School? No. She's in it? Oh, man. Really? That, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but it's <laughs> it, it's so good. It's a Roger Corman movie, right? I think. Probably. Yeah. No, but I think... He got sick. Whoever the director was, he got like sick and like dropped from exhaustion. Someone had to step in, I think, for the last couple of weeks. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Alan so, Arkish. Yeah. So get some kills. And obviously, I think Bob's might be the best. Yeah. He literally is. pins him to the wall. Yeah. That's where you're like, this is not just some dude mm-hmm. who's escaped a mental issue. This guy is fucking strong and creepy and crazy. Oh, yeah. Now we get to the characters slash the acting. Mm-hmm. Now, the acting, it's like, it's not the best from everyone, but yeah. we've got some obvious standouts. Well, Donald Pleasance, man. Right. Donald Pleasance, build first. Mm-hmm. Introducing. And, uh, introducing <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. Every time I see that, I'm like, wow, that's that is so weird. Crazy. Yeah. So, And that was the other thing is I think her character is a little more developed and, you know, she, she's part of that... Uh, what what do you call it? The final girl trope and all that shit. She's a scream queen, man. Yeah. She is the scream queen. But I like how they had her smoking smoking the pot. You know, yeah. just 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 she's a girl scout. It doesn't mean she's perfect. Mm-hmm. She's a good person, but you know, she's not a she's not a she's not a prude. Yeah, she's you know? not she's not she can she can party, if you will. That's why I thought the dialogue <laughs> is so funny when uh Annie mm-hmm. who's who's sort of like She's so sardonic Mm -hmm. when she says the thing, like, great. Uh, I I thought that line, great, I got three choices. Like, listen to you guys screw around, babysit, or, like, talk to you. (laughs) Right. There's a lot of dialogue. Again, that's one thing I picked up watching this another time is the dialogue sharp. Yeah. It has to do with the characters. I I love Donald Pleasant's lines. Mm -hmm. It's like, shouldn't you stop referring to him as it? If you say so. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, I'm so done explaining this to some people. Yeah, man. He's he's by far, like, one of the best parts. And I, yeah, I, it's weird. I forgot he's not, like, he's in it, like, in in the beginning. But, like, once we meet, like, Laurie Strode and, like, shit starts happening, he's not in it as much. He's not until in, the end. Yeah, he's not in it as much. But the thing is, he's so integral to introducing us to Michael since Michael doesn't say anything. And making us afraid of Michael. Right, because he's like... You guys have no idea. Because everyone's like, what? He's just some dude who killed his sister years ago. What's the big deal? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, let me tell you what the big deal is. 
Death has come to your little town. Yeah, it's just like great lines like that. And of course, let's not forget his best line of all time. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. (laughs) (laughs) That shit always gives me a good larf. Oh, man. A good, good larf. Yeah, man. That's a good fucking scene. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. So we went through that. The story. We've talked a little bit about it. Yeah, the randomness of it, again, for me, is, like, why I think it scared people so much is, like, holy shit, this is just happening to some girl because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. And it develops in a very natural way, like, especially the Halloween stuff. Like, uh, what's-her-name goes to the laundry room to get her stuff. She gets stuck. Oh, no, we think something's going to happen. Nothing does. What's going to happen next? Oh, she's got to go to her car and get some. Then, then she gets that, killed. So that's what I'm saying is they give you a, a couple stutter steps. Yeah, it feels like you're reading like the Wikipedia synopsis for like a famous murder. You're yeah. Like, she it, went to the car. She went to the laundry room, then went back. Like, yeah. What's his name? Didn't attack. Then he went to the car and then she got killed there. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like it's ugh. creepy stuff. Yeah, it feels very real. What I think is also like like underrated about how creepy it is is Lori is so sure she's seeing shit. Mm -hmm. And she just, she doesn't want to believe to herself, like, I'm not seeing this right. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like deep down she knows she saw what she saw. Yeah, yeah. For sure. She's super, well, her character learns a lot in this, (laughs) you could say. And I think Jamie Lee Curtis, in her first film role, pretty much, she does a good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, she plays scared very well. Like, when stuff is actually going down, like, when she's... You know, running around the house, like, banging on people's doors and stuff. You actually feel like she's freaked out. Right. I, You know what's one of my favorite parts is when she throws the fucking pot at the window. Yeah, yeah. That whole scene is one of my favorites because I love how it's just, like, what's that called when it's, like, one of the characters has the information, the other doesn't. It's, like, dramatic irony or whatever. Right. He's like, Tommy's like, oh, okay. She's like, open the fucking door. <laughs> like, come on. This dude's after me. Right, right. Also, I like how she immediately flips on the survivor switch. Because mm-hmm. she, she's a smart cookie, as they point out. Yeah. Because, like, what's it? PJ Soul's character, she's kind of like a, kind of like a, you know, a ditz. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, I always forget my book. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite trail off ADR lines. Oh, I don't need my Spanish book, my French book, my bio <laughs> book. I don't need any book. She just keeps babbling about that. And then the score's like, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> like while you're just looking off in the distance, she's just talking about all the shit she doesn't study. Yeah, man, that score too. Also, yeah, it's let's, iconic. Let's talk about how good this score is. Mm-hmm. A simple five-four melody. Yeah, and you're gonna remember it. Like if you're in 1978 and you see this, oh man, that's gonna be on your mind. Like oh, it's driving an e- home. It's an easy one to hum. Oh yeah. I mean, it's iconic. And little do people know, they're doing it at something in a very interesting time signature. Man, they don't even know it. They're yeah. getting a little education in music theory. Right. You know what kind of blew my mind, and I thought about it this time around, is the synth kind of worked in a way I think that maybe they weren't expecting. Mm-hmm. Because listening this time around, I'm like, I feel like this was meant to be an orchestral score of some kind, or at least like a you know a small string section or something. And they just didn't have the resources? Yeah, they just didn't have the resources. So they just figured, fuck it, we'll just do it this way. And it kind of worked out to the better. My favorite are the synth hits. Yeah. Like whenever something happens, you hear like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, when he just like shows up... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, shows great. up around the corner. Uh, that's so a funny. new fight, a new challenger has <laughs> arrived. <laughs> It's like a Pokemon game. No, I was thinking Street Fighter. Oh, I was thinking a. <laughs> Michael uses Slash. <laughs> There'd be a scary. It's super effective. Oh, God, <laughs> fuck. Uh, that, that'd be an interesting uh, movie. No, actually, that'd be terrible. <laughs> an eight-bit movie. An eight-bit eight bit Halloween movie. Well, they do that shit online, like the eight-bit trailer. Or whatever. Oh yeah. Like no, the- there's a few of those. Yeah. Okay, the other element that we got to address well, here. I just want to talk just a little bit more about that score. The music? Yeah. Well, my favorite is the, I mean, everyone talks about the fucking, you know, the main theme, but I love the theme of just them walking through the neighborhood. Oh, the, yeah, see that? Dun, 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 yeah, yeah. It's great, like, act one music of a horror movie. Yeah, that's the thing is the music, it's, it's sort of, 
I mean, obviously, it, like every score is supposed to do this, but mm-hmm. this does a particularly good job of intensifying as things get more intense. Mm-hmm. For sure. And it just or like, continues. how about dun 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 dun? Oh my ding, god! Ding, dun, dun, That's the scariest one. See, that one freaks me the most out because it's like he's on the attack. He's ready to kill. You know, it, it's like it's already happened once, and you're fucking next. And he's like moving fast. Like that's yeah. when you really freak out. Like everybody knows Michael Myers can carry. He can fucking make some ground when he's moving slow. When he's moving fast, you're fucked. Well, see, he's the king of like, I'll just let you fall over your own feet, and then mm-hmm. I'll just calmly walk up to you, and then I'll kill you. Right, right. God. Also, the breathing thing that Michael does. There's so many, like, iconic things that have been borrowed, or at least, like, sort of, like, paid homage to. Mm-hmm. The like breathing the, on the phone. Well, the breathing thing, yeah, there's that. It's also, like... Nightmare on Elm Street score, I couldn't imagine it being that way if not for Halloween. Mm-hmm. For sure. Also classic. Meow, 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 meow. God, Jesus. It's like the darkest John Williams ever, man. <laughs> it's true. But fuck, dude, yeah, the the breathing. God, that's some creepy shit. That's a, there's so many, like, a, or just the idea of, like, it's a masked dude with a knife. Yeah. Because that's, it, like, it's so weird that a that. big masked dude with a knife. Yeah. It's like, so not just like fucking Danny DeVito with the yeah. <laughs> like this is some fucking like this guy's a linebacker for the fucking Jets or some shit. Like he's huge and he's just inhuman. Yeah, because he just doesn't give a shit for sure. It's no, no time for remorse or any of that shit. Speaking of strength, we got to talk the finale. Yeah, something we loved about well both the Halloween movies is the there's the showdown. Yeah, between Lori and Michael and well, oh man. Well, that's the other thing is another trope that I, I bl- at least as far as I can think of, like, sorry if I don't know every movie ever, but mm-hmm. maybe Black Christmas did this. I can't remember. But the idea that Michael Myers, you see him drag Bob away after he pins him to the wall. Mm-hmm. And then he does that to a couple of, or no, th- one shot that creeps me out is the kids. Uh, first of all, the kids, oh, great characters. I kind of like them. They're funny. Yeah. Which is like, what's your name? Like, Lindsay? Just like such a blank stare at the TV. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And they're watching The Thing, by the way. Yeah, the original Thing, which... John Carpenter would remake later. Yeah, Good which I, I always thought was great. There's like a Leslie Nielsen movie on. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good shit. These kids have good taste, man. <laughs> they do. And Tommy, he's just he's just so excitable. Yeah. Like I, there's so many great moments with them, like when he's trying to scare Lindsay, but in the process he goes behind the curtain and then he sees uh, Annie being carried. Yeah, that shot freaks me out. Like, like imagine it, looking out your window and seeing exactly. Something like See, that. that's what it is. It's like it's not like it's legitimately like scaring me, but it's like it does in the way it's like being in that situation. Because mm-hmm. I always think that like, like Rear Window probably was like the first movie to think about like. What do you see when you're like looking out? Right. You know, like nosiness and like all that shit and like voyeurism. Mm-hmm. But this was like, he was just in the middle of pulling a prank and just happens to catch a glimpse. Oh, God. And little did, little did Lori know that not only, here's what like twists me up about that. Not only was he not making it up, it's like he's carrying one of your dead friends. Like, not that's only, what's crazy about yeah, that. Not only is the boogeyman real, he's coming for you, and he's already got some of your some of your closest people. Yeah, he, he's pissed, and he's coming. God. He's going to make a display of all of your friends. Right. A, a nice tableau. See, that's the thing, the house of horrors. Yeah, yeah. She goes in, oh, dead body, oh, dead body. <laughs> it's like, imagine if that scene, like, I, I feel like, I don't know if they did this in any of, like, the scream, or the what's it called like scary movies Mm -hmm. they should have had a scene where it's like 10 minutes it's like naked gun style where (laughs) like uh oj gets shot and he's like ah paint (laughs) ah the stove (laughs) it's like that but it's just like a hundred (laughs) bodies uh it's just like the next room she's like let me guess another dead body Uh, but yeah, that's some that's some fucked up stuff, and the tombstones there. And of course, she she has a oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Oh God, did he dig dig up the body or no? He well, the body isn't there, and the tombstone's gone. So that always made me think, I'm like, where's Judith? Or, yeah, her body. I think they had that in one of the sequels. I can't remember. Mm. I gotta be honest. It's like 
I see four like I watch I watch one legitimately every year. Mm-hmm. You know, two through five. I honestly watch in like chunks <laughs> on AMC at like various on various days. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen really any of them besides four from like start to finish where I could tell you what happens like for sure. Okay. And honestly, like to this day, I think I've only seen uh, six, which is the one that everyone hates. Mm. That one I've only seen maybe less than three times. Really? Start to finish, I know I've only seen it that many times. Which one's the Paul Rudd one? I always ask this question. Five. That's ah. five, man. Is six Resurrection? No, no, no. That was before they decided. That, no, remember six fucked it all up and then, uh, sorry, it was six decides he's a druid and then it's like you over explained it. God. And I think that's part of like a, a big theme about horror that people have this debate all the time. Mm-hmm. Is the idea, it's like, well, why is that scary? It's like, well, it's scary because you don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, but if you know, it's less scary. And I'm kind of, I'm on the fence with this debate because I understand entirely why people want to know less. But I think if you're going to have a sequel, it's like you can't just be like, just because, again. Mm-hmm. It's like either don't make a sequel, which we know is not the case with horror because low budget. Uh, high returns. High returns equals we're get making sequels. Yeah, and they're going to be making a sequel to Halloween the 2018, new one? they yeah. said. I'm not surprised. Yeah. They were originally going to film it back to back, but then they decided, let's wait to see if people like it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I respect the shit out of that because that's Same. like – see, that to me is like, fine. You're going to – like I said, go make Gremlins a third time. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> but it's like – if you're going to do that, I'd rather you do it with care. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. yeah, maybe it's like a move, like MCU's on its twentieth movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, as long as you guys make them with care. Yeah, it seems like there was a lot of caution in the Halloween movie that we ended up getting yeah. this year, right? And it worked out for the better. Hopefully, they do it the same way the next next time. Right, but th- back to the whole thing about like. Don't explain the origin. Do explain the origin. Mm -hmm. By the sixth one, it's like, what the hell else are you going to do? Right. And I completely understand by that point, they made him like a druid. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? It's like they needed to have one person who like killed all the sacrifices or some shit like that. Something. It's been a while since I've seen it. There's like his weird, mom was something. Or they involved like magic and shit. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like. Before, it's just like, this guy's like Rasputin, he just doesn't die. Right. Or it's like, he's an anomaly more so than he is like... Magical? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, there's elements that make you think, oh, but he disappeared. Like, he, she saw him in the bushes and then he was gone. But she turns her head. I always like to imagine Michael Myers like sprinting really fast and like diving into like a, you know, like a flower bed or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like... And that's why he's breathing so hard all the time. Dude, he's always out of breath, dude. <sighs> he's sprinting, man. Also, all, all that sprinting. He's not slow. He's actually very fast. Gotta love the final montage of, of shots of, of Haddonfield, like all the locations, like Lori's yeah. house, Michael's house, uh, Annie's house. It's like, and you hear the breathing, you're like, where the fuck is he? Yeah, you're just like, is this over? Yeah, yeah. Also, let, let's let's go through a little more of the play-by-play of the ending. Mm-hmm. So we get the flower. She falls downstairs. She's injured. Yes. She she scrambles to the front door, and I love that. It's like, well, she gets stabbed in the fucking arm. Yeah, or grazed. You know, I, at I least. just I just can't get enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, what's going on? She's just like, like I love how she's just like she, she didn't give it, she didn't give me that fucking punk ass Tommy no satisfaction. <laughs> Not e- not even like a Tommy. You were right. He's out there. Just she just doesn't mention that he's right. I, I mean, the kids did bully him. That's true. They smashed his pumpkin. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. What jerks? There. But l- little did we know that that's not the worst bullies would get in the Halloween franchise. Yeah, that's true. In four. Oh yeah, man, I've seen that. They're over the top. I've seen that scene. Like these kids, it was like believable bullying. Like the boogeyman's gonna get you, and then Lori's like, "All right, so no time for this shit." It's like, in short, Tommy, the boogeyman's out there. Yes. So get in the fucking closet. Yeah, like <laughs> stay the there door in your fucking mom's room or whatever. And you get like you get like four iconic ass scenes right or 
are little shots right in a row. Oh, yeah. You get the closet fight. Mm-hmm. And it's like she tries to show him where he is. Yeah, and then you get the fucking kids running out and Loomis coming up and coming in. and I love how you know, Loomis see, My favorite is Loomis sees the kids. He's like, yep. <laughs> he's like, hmm. As I suspected. Yeah, he's, just, he's not even like surprised or anything and worried. He's like, okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm definitely going to shoot him. <laughs> he, he, he's 100% going to be there. Going to make sure my safety's yeah. off and I'm going <laughs> to... But uh, like, I love... I can't get enough of that, like, sit up, turn head. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. That's what it is. It's like the robotic movement. It's just so representative of Michael Myers. And his, it represents his inhumanity. Yes. Is, is he part machine? His, <laughs> his lack of, his depersonalization. <laughs> All right, let's take off these berets. Gross. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> smell, like, smell like croissants. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, you get so many of those right in a row. The closet mm-hmm. scene is just so freaky. Yeah, and then, of course, you get Loomis shooting Michael and then him not being there. Yeah, see, that's that's the best thing they could have done. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the problem with movies and endings is if there's anything open-ended at all, especially now, mm-hmm. got to have a sequel. And Whereas it- I feel like at that time it was mm-hmm. like, no, it's just scarier that way. Yeah, and now it's like you do that now, like you'll get groans from the audience. You know, sometimes. Like, oh, God. Yeah. But like that time, you're like, no, I don't want that. Like, yeah, you, I don't want him to be alive. That's that's <laughs> scary. Yeah, yeah, right. See, another way they do that sometimes, which I kind of can dig. Mm-hmm. You get a cackle if your villain's a cackler at the end of the credits. Oh yeah, that freaks me out the most because then you're just left with silence as you see the like this movie's fictitious. I'm like, mm-hmm. shut up, it's real, and you're scaring me. <laughs> like the one movie that scared the shit out of me as mm-hmm. a kid, which I I feel like I keep forgetting when I mention what did scare me when I was like legit badly scared me. Mm-hmm. Like this was like almost as bad as like Chucky for me. Fucking it, man. Oh, really? Wise. <laughs> that laugh at the end. God. Freaked me the fuck out because you're like, they killed him. They killed him in the cave. And it wasn't scary because it was just a dumb spider monster. It's like, <laughs> nope. Oh, God. That's so, some scary shit. Yeah, but I think this was one of the OGs of that. Yeah, you just get his breathing. Uh, yeah. It's Michael's style. He got it. Soft spoken. Soft spoken, strong, silent type. But he's always out. He okay. He just got shot six times, and now he's running. Mm-hmm. He's out of breath again. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's good stuff. And interestingly, in the Halloween 2018 movie, uh, I was under the false impression that there was going to be a post credit scene. There wasn't. But if you wait after, until yeah, the, end of the, the credits, bre- you hear the his breathing. breathing. I was like, ah, oh, that's that's good. good you want to know some stuff. bullshit? Hmm. I fucking saw an article that said. There's a post credit scene explained. Right, right. That's what I said. I'm like, I, I was sitting there too, like an idiot. I'm like, there has to be a fucking post credit scene. I heard the breathing. I'm like, okay, cool. And then you just see the fucking Miramax logo, whatever the fuck it was. I'm like, what the it, fuck? <laughs> Come on. The fact that anyone has an audit, the uh, like, I know there's clickbait. It's like, whoever wrote that, fuck you. <laughs> like, come on. That is insanity. You really, you. What did you write in that article? Interesting to note that there is breathing. I thought it was an interesting choice that there was no actual scene filmed to go along with the breathing. Yeah, it's like, you know what a scene is, right? It's yeah. not just audio. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, like, if it's audio, it has to be, like, okay, like, Metal Gear Solid, like, at the end of the credits when there's, like, a phone call between two characters. Yeah. Like, like do that. Like, a character breathing over credits is not a fucking scene. Yeah, or, on, or like a newscast, like, nobody was found in the, the like, strode home. Right, right. Uh, it's, got, it's just like, you get a lot of good shit out of this movie. It's emblematic of many, many, what, I mean, fuck, what would come later. I mean, so many imitators, so many influences. I mean, now, goddamn. Like, really, what? Okay, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about all the movies I watched recently and what they influenced somehow. Child's Play? Point of view shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Any movie with the final girl trope, yeah, basically. Mean, well, because that's the thing is like you'd f- like that only makes sense though. It's like you have to have your your main character not be a dumbass to survive a horror movie, mm-hmm. and that's part of the fun is that usually all their friends get killed because they are morons, right? And 
sometimes it's unbeknownst to them that causes them to get you know killed like oh you're drunk or whatever Mm -hmm. but then other times it's like there's a killer on the loose yeah i'll just go out and take out the trash at 2 a.m by myself (laughs) right oh i'm also on mushroom so i can't like i can't function (laughs) like a normal person yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah no i get what you mean there is some joy in it when you you know when they're really shitty but like i feel like this struck a good balance between like I don't dislike Annie Brackett or Linda. No, but not you're at like, all. you're like, God damn it, like, fucking, of course that's not Bob. Bob would say something at this point. He wouldn't just stand there wearing that fucking sheet. Come yeah. on, like, ah. That scene always gets well. It's it's like, what what's creepy about that is it's right under your nose. Mm. Annie gets straight up ambushed. Yeah, you know, you know it's one subtle thing I noticed, like. I guess it's not really that subtle. She just gets in the car when mm. it's unlocked. She comes back and then she's like, she sits in the seat. She thinks of, you see her like, huh? Mm. Cause she's like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's like, Oh he just, shit. He just fucking strikes. That's what I mean. It's not like get in the car, get strength. Like that's how a boring horror movie does it. Mm-hmm. It's like, even if you know where he is, it's like, you got to set it up. It's like, Oh shit. I did. The car was locked. Mm. What the fuck? And I just, I opened the door. It was unlocked. It's like, uh uh-oh. Before you can finish thinking about that. That's some spooky shit. There's, you know, horror movie. There's a a dance to it, man. Yeah. There's a dance in in suspense and tension and expectation between the audience and the filmmaker. And John Carpenter nailed it. That's why I, I guess that's probably, you know, to answer our question, which we had earlier, why when there'd been some similar things that this stood out. And I think that was it. It's that it's not like a guy in a mask killing people is like the end all be all of this. It's how everything came together. It's the execution. Execution is where it counts, man. So if you didn't mind us ruining the whole movie by discussing it at length, we suggest you watch Halloween if you haven't seen it. Or maybe you have seen it. It's a good time of year, obviously, to rewatch it and revisit this timeless classic horror movie.